friends, Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by today. Today's little project, I'm going to show you how to do the classic interlock, not diagonally, but in a straight line, like this one, and like this one. It gives a really fun edge, and this is my favorite way to do it, as opposed to the C to C that I showed you, I think, yesterday. This, you get to make long rows instead of going diagonally. So this one is way more fun when you have a color that you really like and you just want to have nice long stripes instead of the starting in the corner and making it tiny. We get to make this one big. I thought this one was really pretty for the autumn. I love the color scheme. This one is Apple Picking from Lion Brand Cupcake. And this one is Mandala Fairy. Great color scheme. So I'm going to use a few pieces, a few little remnants that I have of Mandala Fairy. Yes, this one. I'm going to use a few of these colors and just show you how this works. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks! So I have a little bit of curling on these very first parts, but don't worry. It's okay. It's an easy fix. Once you put an edging on it and everything gets a little bit heavier, like this one, there's not a whole lot going on for my curling. It's not down here, not here. It's a little bit right up here, but that's my working area anyway, so it's okay. We're going to fix that. I'm going to show you in a different video how to fix your curling. One of the best ways is to move up at least one full hook size from what your recommendation is on your sleeve. So here they want me to use a five even though this is a three weight. I never use a five when I'm working with this, but they want me to use a five, so I moved up to a six. You might want to work up to a seven. If you have a seven, not all hook sets come with a seven, which is kind of a bummer. And I'm gonna leave this color out so you can see what I'm working on. What we do is we make one whole long row at a time instead of one square and then move up to two and then move up to three, like we did with the diagonal. This one goes in a straight line. So. We want to get a slip knot on our hook. So you want to chain in multiples of 11 plus 1. So I'm going to chain, for demonstration purposes here, 22 plus 1. So 23. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, plus one. So that's where we start. So there's our chain. If you're making a blanket, it would be way longer. This is one, two, three, four, five. This one was fifty-six. Five times eleven plus one. So you can see that's all the longer it is. So you want to do a little bit of math and decide how long something should be. So here's our chain. We have a chain of 22. So in the very first chain that's closest to your hook here that you can work into, go through, yarn over, pull up a loop, leave it on our hook. Go through the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull up a loop. I have six on my hook. I want seven. Yarn over, pull up one more loop on my hook. So you're going to have seven loops on your hook to begin our first square. So you yarn over, pull through two. Pull through those first two loops. Yarn over, pull through the next two. Yarn over, pull through the next two. Repeat that sequence all the way down. I have two loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through both of them, so I'm back to a single loop on my hook. That was row one. Hooray! We're already done with row one. So now we want to start working underneath these little vertical bars, right in here. All the way down. You see, it's making one of those every single time. That's where we're going to be working. So take our hook, go underneath that vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, leave it on your hook. Do that again. Over and pull up a loop. 
yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, and one more time. That's our fifth vertical bar, but I only have six loops on my hook and I need seven. So then go over to the next chain that has not been worked. All of these have been worked. This is the next one that has no activity yet. So we're going to go through, yarn over, pull up, and now I have seven loops on my hook. So yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through both, it's back to one single loop on my hook. That was row two already of our first square. Do this, repeat that same sequence under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, leave it on the hook. I'm going to go through every vertical bar that we have, which gives us six loops on our hook. This is our beginning that was already left on our hook underneath five vertical bars, plus we need one more. So we're going to jump to the next chain that hasn't been worked, go through that chain, Yarn over, pull through, and now I have seven loops on my hook again. Yay! Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over, pull through the next two. All the way down. And now I have back to a single loop on my hook. And that was our third row. And you can tell it's already starting to look into like a square. Please remember that it really helps my channel when you watch the video all the way to the end. So let's do that one more time. Underneath every vertical bar, with the yarn over and pull through and leave it on your hook. Okay, underneath all five vertical bars gives us six loops on our hook. We want seven. So we're going to the next chain that hasn't been worked, right here. Through, yarn over, pull up our loop, and now I have seven on my hook again. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way down. And there's our last two. Yarn over and I have one loop on my on my hook. One, two, three, and that was row four. We're going to repeat. One. Go under each vertical bar with a yarn over and pull through. So there's all five of my vertical bars. It gives me six loops on my hook. I want seven. So we're going over to the next chain we haven't worked. Go through the chain, yarn over, pull up your loop. There's seven. Hooray! Now yarn over, pull through two. This is so addictive. So once you get the hang of this, you can just fly through making a little thrower, an afghan, or baby blanket. You can make it huge, you can make it small, you can do whatever you want. It's fun and addictive. And there's our fifth row. One, two, three, four and five. But as you can see here, this one at the very top is not finished like the other ones are. We have to do something with these vertical bars. So what we do is you want to be nice and loose and if you can't stitch loosely, then get a bigger hook. We want to go underneath that vertical bar, yarn over, and slip stitch just like that underneath each one. Go under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, and pull through for a slip stitch. And you want to do that loosely because you have to work into these stitches again and if they're tight, they're really hard to work. Really hard to work. Pull through. Now after we work our fifth vertical bar, there's always something else that needs to happen. It's like when we were over here, we were grabbing another loop. We're going to do the exact same thing. The next chain that we haven't used, also will get a slip stitch. So we have an even stitch count for every square. First square is done. Isn't that nice? And see how fast that went. It went super fast, didn't it? So now we're going to start our second one. So we have one loop on our hook. We want to go into chains, just like we did at the very beginning. Yarn over and pull up a loop until we have seven loops on our hook. Okay, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we know we're at the right spot for making our next square. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way down again, just like we did on the first square, till we have one loop left on our hook. Easy peasy. And that is connected to our square over here. So we're going to do the same thing under every vertical bar. One, two, three, four, five vertical bars. There's six loops on our hook, but I want seven. We need seven. So we need to go find our next chain that hasn't been worked, which is right here. Yarn over, pull up a loop. There's your seven. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. There's our last two. Pull through, one loop on our hook. So addictive. I just love working with Tunisian. I haven't done a lot of this on camera for people because when I get into this mode, I start making too many things in Tunisian. That was row two. Let's do row three. Exactly the same. Under every bar, pull up a loop. So we did, did all five of our bars, but we still only have six loops. So we need to find the next chain. Go through the chain and pull up a loop. There's our seven. Yarn over, pull through two, 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 and pull through two. That was row three. And our chain is slowly disappearing. So that's row three. Let's start the next row underneath the vertical bars and pull up a loop. All five of our vertical bars, which gives us six loops on our hook. We want seven. We need seven. So we have to go find our next chain that hasn't been worked right here. And there's our seven loops. Yarn over, pull through two, through two, through two, through two, through two, and through two. One loop left on our hook. And that was row four. All of our squares will have five. So we're going to do that underneath every bar again. Six loops on our hook. So we have to go find another chain that has not been worked, which is right here, to give us our seven loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. And pull through the last two. So there's our square. One, two, three, four, five rows. But remember, this one's not finished yet until we do our slip stitches. You have to finish off that row. So we're going to go under the vertical bar. Whoops. Loosely slip stitch. Under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through everything. Yarn over through everything. Here's our last vertical bar. Like I said before, that's never done. There's always one more thing that needs to happen after you've found your last vertical bar. And that means our last chain right here also gets a slip stitch so we have uniform stitches in each square. And there's our two, our two squares. Just like this right here. One, two, three, four. I made two here. You can see with this set here, I actually used a five millimeter hook. Made the squares a little bit smaller and the stitches were a little bit tighter, but I've done so many of these that I know how to work my stitches and my tension a little bit more than some people may. That's why these are bigger because I am using my six millimeter hook. So you can see the difference. Just one hook size can make and that helps with the curling it helps you be able to grab your stitches again. It does a lot of things to help you just use a big hook. Just use a big hook. So there's our first row. Now we can finish off our pink because we're done with the pink for right now. 
Now we're going to do the next row which is offset a little bit, filling in the middle here. So grab a new color and we're going to go in our corner right here, fasten on our new yarn and chain six, three, four, five, and six. Now we're starting our next square. So just like we did before with everything else, we're going into these chains one at a time and bringing up a loop. One, two, three, four, and there's our fifth chain. But I still only have six loops on my hook and I need seven. At this point, when you just fastened on, you want to go back through that same stitch where you fastened on your new color and pull up a loop. Now we have seven loops on our hook again. And repeat the drill, yarn over, pull through two. See why this is so addictive? It's really easy and it's so much fun. And it actually works pretty fast. So I think you'll like it. I think you're going to love it. So that was row one. Underneath every vertical bar, with pulling up a loop. There's our fifth vertical bar, which gives us six loops, but we want seven. So now here we work into our next stitch on our pink that hasn't been worked yet. So we worked into this corner, and we're going to go over to the next stitch and pull up a loop. There's our seven. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. That was row two. So again, under every vertical bar and pull up a loop. We have five vertical bars in these squares. That gives us our six loops on our hook, but we need seven. So go to the next stitch in the pink that hasn't been worked yet and pull up a loop. Now we have seven. Turn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, through two, and there's our last two, pull through. One loop left on my hook to start the next row. That was row three. Now we're going to do row four. Same, same, same. Underneath every vertical bar and pull up a loop. which gives us six, but we want seven. So we go to the next stitch in our pink and pull up a loop. Boom, seven, one, and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two all the way back down. And that was row four of our new square already. Do the same underneath every vertical bar, which there are five of gives us six loops on our hook, but we can't stop there. We have to jump over here to our next unworked pink, pull up another loop because we need seven. Pull through two, 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 and pull through the last two. And that was our fifth row. One, two, three, four, five. It's easy to find by counting your vertical bars, but this one is not complete. We need to finish it off with the slip stitches. Remember loosely, slip stitch and through. Go under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through everything. There's our fourth vertical bar and our fifth vertical bar. But remember, when I hit our fifth vertical bar. We are not done. We need to do one more thing after that bar every time. There's something. So we need to jump over to the next pink stitch that has not been worked and it also gets a slip stitch so that we have uniform stitches. Our stitch count stays correct for each square. There you go. Now we're going to fill this in with another square. And you're almost everything you need to know in order to make this forever and ever and ever. You can make it as big as you want. So we have one loop on our hook, starting again with the new line. You need to yarn over and pull up a loop. Pull through 
until we have the magic number of seven on our hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now we, this is the basis for our next square. So yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. That was row one already. So now we're going to do row two. Under every vertical bar, you need to do a yarn over and pull up a loop. And leave it on your hook. There's our last vertical bar, but that only gives us six loops. So we go into our next unworked pink stitch, pull up our seventh loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. And there's row two. Bam! So fast. Repeat underneath every vertical bar, yarn over and pull up a loop, leaving it on your hook. You get to the fifth one, we only have six loops and we need seven, always need seven. So we're going to go through the next pink stitch that hasn't been worked and yarn over, pull through two all the way across. Let's see how fast you can go on this. That was row three, let's do it again. So this is how you do all of the middle squares. You have working yarn on both sides of the with the pink. There's our six I'm going to go over to this pink right here, pull up our seventh loop, now we yarn over and go through two. And that was row four. We're going to have to make five because there are five rows in every square. There's our last vertical bar, six loops on our hook, jump over here to the pink, the next unworked stitch, seven loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two. See how fast this works? It's just fun. It's just a Tunisian simple stitch. Very, very easy to pick up. Don't even need a Tunisian hook because it's so few stitches. I just love interlock. One, two, three, four, and five. This is our fifth row, but it's not complete. We have to do our slip stitches. Under our vertical bar, yarn over, pull through everything. Under our vertical bar, yarn over and pull through everything. Do that all the way down. Under every vertical bar, plus the next pink stitch so that we have uniform stitch counts. Yarn over and pull through everything. So that's how you do all of these middle stitches. You're working off of both sides. Easy peasy. One more stitch right here. This again, I'm starting out the same. Go under, go in every stitch and pull up a loop until very beginning, it always gets a little bit wonky to me. So there's six and number seven. Seven loops on our hook so we can start our process again. However, when we're working at the very edge, we have to make an edge. We have to basically chain up one because we won't have anywhere to work. So now that we have seven on our hook, we want to yarn over and pull through the very first loop. What we did there was chain up and give ourselves a little bit of edging so we have somewhere to work. You can't just leave it flappy. What you're doing is making this part right here when it didn't exist. So there's our seven. So yarn over, pull through two all the way across. and do that again under every vertical bar. We're going to pull up a loop under every vertical bar. There's our last one. I only have six stitches on my hook. We need seven. So where we go, we turn this a little bit and you see that stitch that we just made. 
we want to work into under both loops right here. You can see that. Yarn over and pull through just those two. And yarn over and pull through just this one. And then we worked all the way down again till we have one loop on our hook. One more time. Under every vertical bar and then turn. We want to work under both of these bars of this stitch. Looks very suspiciously like a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over and pull through one again. Yarn over, pull through two, all the way down. So that's giving us a nice edge. So when we're all done with our project, we'll be able to put a border on it. Under every vertical bar, six loops on my hook, right back here, under those two bars, of the new stitch that we made. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through one. Now we chained up. Boom, boom. Same as we've been doing all the other times. Yarn over, pull through two. Now with row four, we have one more to do before we are done with this square. Under every vertical bar. Gives us six loops on our hook. We need seven, so we're gonna go turn and find the little stitch right here that we made. Yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through one. Now we have seven. Do the same old, same old. Easy peasy. One, two, three, four, and that's row five. Whoopsie. And that's row five, but it's not finished. This one still needs to have its slip stitches. So underneath every vertical bar, yarn over, pull through everything. Yarn over, pull through everything. Yarn over, pull through everything. And that was our fifth vertical bar, but we're not done yet. There's always one more thing to do after that fifth bar. So we're gonna go over and find these two loops for the one we just made. Yarn over and pull through everything for a slip stitch. And now we're done with that row. And that's everything that you need to know in order to do horizontal interlock. So you just keep repeating. At this point, I did, would start working here with another two and then three. So like this, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. That's how this one would work. So this would make a great scarf, even just being this narrow. Could still be something really awesome. And you can pick all kinds of great colors. Everything's gonna be wonderful about your color choices. You can make everything very unique. And I think it's just beautiful. It's addictive. You're gonna love this one. And I'll show you next time how to fill in these triangles so you can have a nice finished square or rectangle piece. Stop back next time to see that. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks, tell all your friends about me, and stop back very soon. Thanks. Bye.